people of the modern world. I am Lady Xi Shi, a renowned beauty of my time, and also a spy. And I was there to see it all. Twenty-five hundred years ago in China, two mighty kingdoms were at war. The kingdom of Wu, ruled by King Fu Chai, and the kingdom of Yue, where Gao Jian ruled. The two kings fought many battles. Till finally, Fu Chai was victorious. Gao Jian was captured and forced to serve Fu Chai as a slave. He labored hard and endured all sorts of humiliation. All the while, secretly plotting his revenge. Years passed. Eventually, Gao Jian gained Fu Chai's trust, and was finally given his freedom. He was allowed to return home to his own kingdom. When Gao Jian arrived home, he found his kingdom had fallen on very hard times. He wasted no time rebuilding his cities and restoring the economy. He strengthened his army. For revenge was never far from his mind. From his palace, Gao Jian devised many strategies to undermine the Wu Kingdom. He sent bribes to his greedy court ministers, which spread corruption throughout the palace. He sent. Beautiful women to flatter and distract King Fu Chai. That's where I came into the story. As a good spy, I sent reports to Gao Jian about all that I saw in the court of Wu. He also sent a gift of precious lumber, which Fu Chai used to build a magnificent palace. That extravagance wasted the kingdom's treasury. Forcing Fu Chai to raise taxes, this causing more suffering and resentment among his people. Then Gao Jian implemented another devious ploy. He told Fu Chai that a terrible drought had wiped out U.S. crops, and asked for a loan of 500 tons of seed grain for planting. Fu Chai agreed to the request. The next year. Gao Jian repaid the loan. His farmers collected seeds, but before sending them off, he had them all boiled, just enough to make them infertile. Fu Chai had the boiled seeds planted in the fields all over the kingdom, but at harvest time, the fields were still bare. Nothing sprouted but weeds. Famine was spreading throughout Wu, and the palace was in chaos. Gao Jian saw his moment had arrived. He waited for Fu Chai to let down his guard and then attacked. The Yue army was well trained and well fed. It quickly overran the Wu forces, captured their capital, and burned down Fu Chai's palace. Fu Chai could not endure such humiliation. So he took his own life. Gao Jian now ruled both Wu and Yue kingdoms. After years of hard effort, his revenge was complete. He had successfully undermined his rival. So take heed to this tale, my listeners. You don't always need soldiers to weaken your enemy. Do as Gao Jian did, and you too can build a mighty kingdom from a pile of tiny seeds.
1966. South Vietnam and its principal ally, the United States, are fighting a war against the communist regime in North Vietnam. After years, and despite vastly superior firepower, U.S. forces approach stalemate against the North and their allies in the South, the Viet Cong. It seems now more certain than ever that the bloody experience of Vietnam is to end in a stalemate. How can they get an edge? Their idea is bold. Weaken the communist forces not with bombs, but with rain. Every day, 30 tons of provisions travel the 600-mile network of jungle paths known as the Ho Chi Minh Trail. Operation Popeye's mission, to wash out this vital supply route to the Viet Cong. Will enough rain destroy the roads and make resupply impossible? Can the U.S. military make mud, not war? The U.S. Air Force conducts 50 test flights, spraying the clouds above the trail with silver iodide crystals to modify the weather. These crystals serve as ice nuclei that water can condense around to create rain clouds. The tests seemingly prove effective. 80% of the time, the clouds produce rain. Between 1966 and 1972, the U.S. flies 2,600 Operation Popeye missions. How successful are they? Weather is hard to predict. But while Popeye is in operation, the monsoon season lasts 45 days longer than average each year. The Ho Chi Minh Trail persists, however, and the war continues for three more bloody years. The science behind Operation Popeye's mission is still in use today. Nations use cloud seeding to counter drought, increase snowfall, minimize flood risk, and improve air quality. Will it be used again for covert purposes? Future forecast unknown.